So we know the principles of the Kybalion, but how do we apply them in our practical life? Here are three ways that you can practically apply the hermetic principles of the Kybalion. If you're new here, hi, my name is Idiang. I wrote a master's on alchemy and hermeticism, and even though as a scholar the Kybalion is my least favorite of the hermetic texts, that doesn't mean that it doesn't offer any kind of wisdom. So let's go. Oh, and also I'm a cat. Now first, it's important to know that the seven principles of the Kybalion build on one another to delineate a fundamental truth. And that is that everything around you is a mental vibration. All things exist within the mind of the all. So everything from the seeable to the unseeable is made from the same mental material, but with each thing having its own frequency. Now the first most practical lesson that we can learn is from the principle of polarity based on our understanding of vibration and correspondence. Yeah, and you said you were going to make this practical. All right, so let's say that you're afraid to do something. In that moment, you are consumed by the vibration of fear. You know that fear exists on the lowest of emotional planes, meaning that as it ascends to higher planes, it will change as an emotion. But this change happens according to the principle of correspondence. So you can't just elevate fear until it becomes an apple. You have to transform it into its corresponding higher manifestation, which would be courage. Fear can change to courage. Hate can change to love. In a more tangible way, cold can turn to heat. And this is done via your mind power and focus, which I'll get to at the end. Lesson number two is how to escape the principle of rhythm. The principle of rhythm is how things move on the polarity in a wave-like fashion. This stretches from the personal to the collective. In way that your moods rise and fall, so do empires throughout history. And most people are the victims of rhythm, most familiarly the rhythm of their moods. To escape this, one has to master the law of neutralization. This doesn't mean taking a neutral position. What it means is rising in the planes of correspondence so that you're serving on the higher plane and becoming a master on the lower. To serve on the higher plane is to be committed to the law of the universe so that when things don't go your way, you understand that this is part of the larger plan. The master hermitist can see, to a degree, that plan. And finally, the principle of gender. Even though we don't like the ideas of gender, this is probably the most useful thing you can take from this book. We want to understand the feminine as an energy of creation and destruction, and the masculine as the energy of activation and direction. If you're purely focusing on feminine energy, then sure, you're creative and chaotic, but you probably don't have any real willpower or direction, nor can you really impress ideas onto others purely in your masculine, then yeah, you're a go-getter, you're a doer. You're likely also a little rigid. You can't really think outside the box. To impress real change on the world, we need both. We can't just be dreamers and we can't just be doers. And the book highlights the fact that most people, contrary to popular belief, have a lazy masculine. And that's why they're so impressionable. That's why they can't ascend to higher planes. It's why they're victims to the rhythm of their moods and politics. To strengthen these powers within you, besides reading and understanding these principles, you need to do one thing. Meditate. Love you. Good luck.